Hi there, Firebirds fans, and welcome to another episode of The Fireplace brought to you by Suncorp Team Girls. We're covering off on all of the action from the game on the weekend with the Firebirds and all things Suncorp Super Netball. The game on the weekend, it was an absolute nail biter, really tough, a great start and sort of fell back a little in the second quarter level peggings at the end of the game. You've had a few days now to reflect on it. What's been your wash up of the girls' performance? Um, the wash up on that performance, and we had analysis this morning and we reviewed the game. Um, we're extremely disappointed with our performance overall. The first quarter um, was a good quarter. We made the most of our turnovers and we scored well, putting us in front. They made uh, a couple of changes and we just didn't uh, adjust to those changes but we didn't defensively shut them down on their transverse line and that in our attack on the transverse line we did not make those and hit those connections in the first phase. We, they disrupted us really well across both our transverse lines. And one of the things that you might have done to sort of allow you guys to have that flow and that change in connection across the transverse line was the inclusion of Gemma Mai Mai onto court in that second half of the game. And personally, I loved seeing what Gemma brought to the game. What were your thoughts and, and sort of thought process in, in bringing her on and how do you think she went? The reason why we put Gemma on was we knew, well, we know that she's got fantastic speed and that we can actually put the ball up to her high and we just needed somebody to take the drive down the line to be able to connect but we needed her to get out on that center pass uh, which she did well and then we needed to drive and that was the thought processes of myself putting Gem on. I want to tap into that coaching brain of yours a little bit more because I'm a bit of a netball nerd and we want to appeal to the netball nerds at home and I want to talk about stats. Now lots of coaches use and interpret stats really differently can you give us an insight into some of the key statistics that you use sort of week in and week out to drive the decisions that you're making and also to help you prepare to come up against different oppositions? For example, today, what we used in our review was we went back and had a look at our KPIs, the, the, um, the percentages that we need to be making. Uh, and this week we were able to tick off one of those KPIs, which was our shooting because the KPI is 85% and we shot 89%. So that was fantastic by Romelda and Gretel. Um, you know, one of the key things from this game that we probably didn't have enough of is maybe uh, some of those and um, better balance with Gretel and her play into Romelda with her goal assists. Um, that was probably down a little bit this week. Oh. I'm glad you're not 100% reliant upon stats because I featured rarely on the stat sheet. So that was always a good thing for me as a player. Talking about those shooters though, and their 89% shooting rate, Gretel Tippett and Romelda Aitken are just in scintillating form at the moment. And they are the focus of our Team Girls Moment of the Week. So Rose, uh, you've been coaching these girls now into their fourth season as a combination. How can you give us an insight into them, not just as players, but also as people? Romelda and Gretel just have a fantastic um, a, a innate um, personalities and they really bounce off each other really, really well. They embrace each other's differences and I think that that makes them really difficult to match up against. But also they're really starting to just evolve a little bit more as netballers. You know, Gretel's, you know, just not the goal attack that just passes the ball to Romelda. She's actually getting in the circle a lot more frequently now and taking the shot. And Romelda's actually changed her game up to be more versatile and get out and um, be that playmaker out the front. So they just, they really enjoy each other. And you can see that when they do something really well, something spectacular, they will, you know, after a goal's been shot, they will high five each other and really come together to really um, build that energy between them. Yeah, and I can't think of a better example of team girls with girls supporting girls because they help each other to grow and change into being amazing players and the trust that they show in each other is just something that you must value incredibly as a coach and, and the leader of the team. We're going to move on from one amazing Jamaican to another incredible Jamaican in Janelle Fowler. 
She is the spearhead of the West Coast Fever. They are the ladder leaders. They're in red hot form at the moment, undefeated so far and leading the Suncorp Super Netball Premiership ladder. You're taking them on this weekend. It's a daunting prospect given the form that they're in at the moment. How are you going to stop that momentum that they're showing at the moment? Oh, Fever um, are just the, the, the team of the moment. It's just a great opportunity for us to be able to go head to head with them. We know that they had, you know, a slight, very close, really competitive win over Lightning. So that gives us, you know, that confidence that we can go head to head with them. It's going to take the team of 10 of us to beat um, Fever. Yes, they've got that spearhead of Janelle and she's just absolutely potent and she does all their shooting, the majority of their shooting, yes. Um, however, we need to make sure that we are doing the work at the circle uh, before the ball gets into the circle because uh, when it, once it gets into the circle, it's you know a goal. And so our work in our centre court, on our first phase, defence and the pressure that we create there is an absolute must. And that's what we need to really work on heavily this week at training. And of course, the Firebirds do take on the West Coast Fever this Saturday at 3pm at the Brisbane Entertainment Centre. Tickets are still available. If you can snap them up, do so. And if not, make sure you tune in to Channel 9 at 3pm on Saturday. It's live and it's free. And until next week, go the Firebirds.